I think when you look at businesses and you look at the world that we're in, and maybe you look at the mental health areas, those two paths don't cross very often. And sometimes we, you know, a lot of employers don't want those paths to cross, or maybe the mental health agencies don't, but it's a natural fit. You know, when, we, when I sat down with, with employers, uh, I was, first of all, amazed at how little they knew about the, um, the, the services that, that we provide. And when I began to list the alcohol and drug programs that we had, uh, early intervention programs, mental health programs, and then told them how their employees could take advantage of those programs with, with no cost to them. It was, they couldn't believe that all this was here all this time and they didn't know about it. Business owners are so busy doing their business uh, you know, working work the jobs, getting, getting new work, that this doesn't really fit into their radar. I think for a number of years you knew those organizations were there, but you didn't know what they did or what they were involved with in the community. Maybe they just worked closely with the, with the hospitals or the veterans groups or, or, or some other organization. I think the ask and communication for support between organization and business in the past may have been just a, um, hey, we have a levy coming up. Uh, would you help support that? Uh, or um, would you like to sponsor a t-shirt? We're, we're having a, a walk or a walkathon or maybe a 5K. Would you like to put your, your logo on the back of a t-shirt? That may have been great in, in the beginning to help support that, but everybody is being asked for those donations today. Why am I spending my time and my energy to support you and your levy or your organization? Um, why is that important to me and my business and to my employees? I think right now is a critical time for boards of the organizations who have been supporting our communities for a number of years to really work with our business community, to get with the executives, to get with the HR folks, to get with the union representation of all of our factories and, and organizations. We have to partner to be able to control and to overcome many of the problems we have within our communities. So we've got a population that is at risk we also have a population that's unemployable, and some of that population are in those circumstances because of excess of drug and alcohol use. If we could have Adam boards, if we can have our communities, if we can have our mental health systems be able to get individuals back to an employable state, we, again, economically could flourish. Our businesses and our communities are a source of great energy, great talent, great skills, whatever it is that they do to make money and put more taxes into the system. Individuals who get an opportunity to have tax resources in their hands, I would love for them to really look at business as a partner with them, figure out how we can help each other, because the ultimate bottom line is in order for us to stay healthy and viable as an economic base to raise our families, our communities have to be clean and sober. I believe that business is a partner in this whole issue of substance abuse um, because businesses drive the economy. The businesses need workers. The workers bring home money, they spend money in the stores, uh, the, the, the workers own homes, they pay taxes. And so when we can get the businesses to help the employees understand the whole issue of how the drug-free workplace programs are not just there to stop you from doing something wrong, it, helped, it also helps you to have a better, maintain a better lifestyle. Small businesses were getting those that the large companies were turning away. And he said, we can't be caught in that position. We need to start drug testing ourselves. And then the chamber offered this class. My biggest thing was that there was a way to help them stay here at Spillman, a way to get them help. Because as I've said to our associates time and again, no one should be put on the dung heap of life because they've made some mistakes. 
we need to give people a second chance and this program offers us the possibility of doing that with our associates. Well, the drug-free program that we had prior was just basically the guidelines that workers comp set so that we could get our percentage. Um, and it just didn't seem thorough enough. So we wanted something a little more extensive. Uh, we wanted something that was going to really look at all of the problems with, with drugs and alcohol in the workplace and then also have some type of an alternative program, some place we could refer or have that, that back support uh, for what we were needing. So just something more comprehensive and thorough. Prior to actually going through the comprehensive program with our management, um, we had that drug-free safety program where our second chance agreement failed. It would take three weeks for our employee to get in if they did choose to sign the second chance agreement based on a positive drug screen. Um, so with that three weeks, a lot of things happened. Um, he was off work because he had to have a clean re-entry um, before he could come back. He wasn't getting any counseling for that period of time. And so a lot of times he would quit or he would go find another job. Um, and so it really, it really wasn't supporting what we were trying to accomplish. I think that being a substance-free workplace changes the norms and the culture as for a company because once you go through the training and once you've been a part of it for a while, they realize that they're doing this because they care about me and they care about my family. You're having this policy that Yes, it's a work-related policy for that, but it just transcends to their personal life, their, you know, their family members. It's just amazing how that goes. So I think that's where that shift goes in. You can, you can almost visibly see it. And then they start reaching out to you more as the employer or as the HR representative to say, I've got this going on, do you know how I could find help or do you have anybody that you would recommend or who would you reach out to for this? So that, that's where that culture shift is. They're not afraid then to ask because that stigma is somewhat gone. You know, it, it's tough to live today. Um, financially, um, social burdens, um, the racism that can be out there. Um, when you come into your workplace, you want to know that you're supported and if you're struggling with any type of substance abuse it's important to know that you're going to be supported there too so that's why we've tried to incorporate a program that will actually do that offer that support so it's very important for us to play that role as an employer i would just really encourage you to understand the importance of the other nonprofits and of the businesses in your community not just to help with your funding but to be there to be there as part of the community. And it's the best thing we can do for this community. Not just complain that we have a drug problem and not just expect the courts to do something about it, but how about let's do something about it before these folks ever get into the court system. In order for us to have our workplace at Elford have drug and alcohol free sort of DNA um, is one that everybody understands there's a business case for it. I believe that with communication, with this collaboration instead of competition between the resource groups that we actually could get drug and alcohol free DNA infused throughout Ohio and, and that would help all of us flourish.